After years of talk and anticipation, the Edge is a reality and key to maximising the potential of Edge resources and applications is collaboration. Partnerships are absolutely critical to Edge success. So I'm talking today with Prakash Carter, Segment Director, Edge Services at the Network Platforms Group at Intel, Aitor Rubio, Senior Product Strategy Manager at European Neutral Host Services Giant Celnex, and Antonio Bothigas, Telco Director at Lenovo EMEA, about the evolution of Edge Services and the technologies that enable them and the impact of their collaboration. So welcome everybody. Uh, Prakash, let's start with you. Uh, so technologies, especially at the edge, are evolving at a rapid pace. How are new technologies and service requirements from customers shaping the solutions that Intel is bringing to the market? Thank you for the question and, and uh, welcome everybody to, to the session and I'll welcome my uh, co-presenters co as well. Um, so from, from Intel's perspective, what we see is that the edge of the present and the edge of the future is extremely diverse. Um, diverse from the perspective of the type of use cases uh, that the edge platforms are expected to host, the type of you know, KPIs they're supposed to uh, be able to deliver, um, the type of technologies that they need to have to support those KPIs and those use cases. So um, the, the, what we really observed is that as this diversity has started to evolve uh, from the edge, the edge is quite different from the cloud. Whereas in the cloud uh, type of deployment, you're really looking for this least common denominator, common platform that can pretty much uh, support all types of use cases using this centralized cloud on the edge the edge is much more opinionated and specific to the use case which means that um, you need flexibility uh, on the platform you need uh, opinion in terms of the architecture and it really depends on the type of location that you place the edge platform in and the type of use cases they have to deliver so uh, you know starting out with a platform that you might actually deliver in a customer premise in which case you, you may have you know, a tremendous uh, amount of threat vectors uh, that you have to address uh, because you're fundamentally coming, taking a platform out of the data center or the cloud and deploying it in a sometimes a very unfamiliar environment. Uh, so security becomes key. Um, the, uh, the type of uh, performance that you need on the edge is also kind of vary because once you move that edge from the on-premise onto the network, the type of throughput that your edge platform needs to deliver starts to go up because now you are not just serving uh, devices that are you know uh, hosted on that enterprise but then devices that are hosted across you know a multitude of enterprises in the network um, or you know different types of uh, you know vertical segments so the requirements tend to shift and evolve based on where you put the edge platform and what type of use cases uh, they have to uh, uh, deliver. So uh, so from, from our perspective, what we've really seen is you need diversity, you need platform diversity, you need software that can manage not just the, you know, the compute, but you have to have capabilities for, uh, for AI. Uh, you need to have, you have platforms that are capable of uh, being very secure um, for running applications like media. And also with the advent of 5G, uh, platforms that are capable of running, you know, highly deterministic workloads like a 5G radio access network. So that's that's kind of the key thing that we see, the, the platform diversity and uh, the types of use cases that these platforms have to support. Now, the edge market is seeing the build out of cloud native technologies and the increasing use of microservices to scale out. Uh, how does the coexistence of virtual network functions or VNFs and edge applications in shared general purpose compute platforms support the needs of the industry? Prakash. Yeah, again, a great, great question. Um, just to kind of build on top of what we were talking about so far. Um, cloud native software is a fantastic starting point, right? The technology and the innovation that has happened in the cloud native space is really giving edge kind of that's that great starting point is giving the edge the edge now um but but uh the the challenge we're going to have is that 
what we really need for the edge is edge native software kind of taking what we have built in the cloud but making it really edge native um, if you go to the you know the cloud native landscape you will see hundreds of really exciting projects that are solving some very exciting problems right i mean the clear you know winner in the cloud native space is kubernetes and kubernetes has kind of become this uh, created the center of gravity where a lot of different technologies are kind of gathering around Kubernetes uh, as that cloud native technology. And that ecosystem has truly uh, evolved in the last two or three years, solving all kinds of problems, including, you know, uh, telemetry, uh, things like uh, um, uh, service meshes, things like uh, uh, cluster formation, all kinds of extremely difficult problems that are getting solved in that open cloud native ecosystem. But what, what we've seen is that uh, that is not sufficient. Uh, as you, you know, going back to the point of having opinion on the edge, because on the edge the type of KPIs and use cases that we have to deliver, you need spe uh, specialized uh, software platforms that are edge native, which means you take what we have in the cloud native space and you adapt them for the edge. So that's kind of the philosophy that we have. And that's really the, the, uh, the concept that we've developed in Intel under the Smart Edge program, uh, where our open uh, solution called Smart Edge Open is essentially a set of experiences that we have created for specific use cases. Use cases like uh, 5G private wireless, like um, SASE, uh, like a ORAN type platform, and what we have seen is that cloud native and microservices kind of give you a great starting point. But what we do is we take those components inside Smart Edge Open and create experience kits for different types of use cases. Um, you know, how do you take a standard Kubernetes open source platform, downstream it, and then extend it? Uh, you know, with plugins, with extensions, with operators. Uh, different types of uh, extensions to that standard open source component called Kubernetes to be able to run 5G, to be able to run SASE, different types of security workloads, to be able to efficiently run AI on the edge. And that's really the approach we have taken with Smart Edge Open. Start with the open ecosystem and then extend it to solve edge native requirements. Okay, interesting. Thanks, Prakash. And uh, Antonio, let's come to you now. Uh, the edge is deployed across multiple tiers that require multiple form factors. And there are several challenges here, including the availability of power and security. Uh, how do these factors and key learnings from the field impact the design of end-to-end -end edge infrastructure? Oh, great question. I mean, let me go one step back. Edge computing is moving the computing capabilities that we have in the data center very far. Second big thing is that we're going to be closer where to the data is created or processed. It's one of the next transformational technologies which is going to grow more and more. We know, for instance, from Garner that by 2025, 75% of the data will be created and processed outside of the data center. But even sooner, by 2023, according to Deloitte, 70% of the enterprises will be using intelligent edge. So why edge computing is important? It's important because we're going to reduce the network requirements that we have today. It's important because we are going to have faster availability of the data. And it's important because it's going to enable new services or it's going to improve the services that today the end users are using. So with that, we found different challenges. Edge computing is going to fly in different environments and difficult environments. We're going to have from a wide range of temperatures, for instance, from minus five to 50 or even more. We're going to have dust, vibration, shock. So we need to build systems very, very compact and ruggedized. Second big challenge is regarding security. We need to ensure that we have the right security, not just for the device, but for the sensitive data that we have inside of the service, because sometimes the, the value is going to be even higher than the value of the of the server. And the third thing is that we are moving from a few data centers to hundreds of thousands of sites. So we really need to have the right tools to deploy and to manage all this infrastructure. So with all this framework, Lenovo has been working very closely to Intel partners and customers to build different form factors because we're going to have edge servers in the middle of a highway, for instance, or in the roof or in a manufacturing plant. So we have three key attributes across all the devices that we have for edge. We have 
tools which are going to help us to have an easy deployment of all the infrastructure from the hardware to the OS to the network and cloud layer. We really need to have the right tools to ensure that we are provisioning close to zero touch the BNFs, the CNFs, and the edge applications. The second big thing or the second big attribute that we have is that we need to ensure the right security. So we need to protect all the assets that we have. We're going to have in all the servers that we have today in the street and we're going to have in the street, for instance, tamper and motion detection to protect the value that we have inside of the servers. Even we have a GPS inside any single server to allow the right technician who is touching this server to touch and to get access to, to the server because he's going to have an application in his smartphone. He's going to connect to a central application and we're going to see that this technician is in the right coordinate. So with that, he's going to be allowed to connect to that server. And last but not least, we need to ensure that we have the right connectivities because we can have edge servers very, very far from the data center. So we need to connect to these servers by using 4G or LT, or we can have servers in a manufacturing plant, for instance, and we can use Wi-Fi to access and to manage all this infrastructure. The good news is that today we have modular solutions, we have horizontal solutions to support the current use cases, but for the future use cases too. Today, we have deployments across different fast food chains, for instance, or restaurants or retailers, luxury retailers, NGOs, sport teams. So it's something that is going to be massive and is happening across the globe. Okay, really interesting portfolio developments there. Um, now, uh, ITOR, content delivery has been an important early use case for the edge, but we've recently seen the emergence of multiple use cases related to AI applications and video analytics, for example. Uh, how have your services evolved to address these and other evolving end user needs? Uh, thank you. Thank you for the opportunity for being here today. It's uh, a pleasure to, to be here. First of all, uh, let me please uh, introduce or uh, enlarge a little bit an introduction of our company. Uh, Celnex is the largest telco infrastructure provider in, in Europe. We work as a neutral host uh, provider and we are offering uh, our solutions in 12 different countries right now uh, in Europe with a footprint of more than 130,000 sites. Uh, that allows us to serve uh, more than 20 telco operators. Uh, but it's important, uh, we are not only covering this, this type of business, but we are also extending to other lines of business like uh, IoT and smart cities. Uh, we are covering uh, distributed antenna systems for large venues, or we are even entering the space of uh, private networks that have been commented already by, by my colleagues as, as one of the emerging uh, type of technologies that are very interesting. Uh, for edge computing, you said, uh, and, and I totally agree, that uh, content delivery is, is uh, probably the king, is one of the uh, main drivers uh, for bringing uh, edge computing technologies to the, to the massive deployment scenarios that uh, everybody uh, foresees. Uh, and uh, based on our background, that our company is coming also from the content distribution and, and media world, uh, we are happy with this approach, but it's also true that other emerging technologies like uh, artificial intelligence or uh, video analytics solutions are uh, increasingly taking over this market and are taking uh, much more relevant uh, as presence in, in the use cases that are predominant uh, in the market more and more. Uh, for example, these kind of services and applications are becoming more and more important in, in uh, smart cities uh, scenarios. Uh, this is one of the key areas that are uh, interesting for us that we are uh, helping to deploy in, in different cities, uh, but also focus on, on industrial uh, scenarios, uh, this type of customers for private networks uh, where we are helping to deploy such kind of solutions is, is uh, increasingly uh, apporting or uh, delivering solutions that are based on new uh, technologies. So definitely uh, the type of solutions that we are offering uh, as Telnex uh, are evolving, including uh, all those new capabilities and are complementing the services and the solutions that we are already offering to our customers. Okay, interesting. Yes, uh, enterprise uh, requirements and applications are, are really helping to, to drive edge services. Uh, now that the partnership that Cellnex has with Intel, Lenovo and Nearby Computing is delivering new innovative edge capabilities in Barcelona. 
Uh, how is this solution extending to new markets? And how is the blueprint from the first implementation changing and evolving? Uh, Aitor, let's start with you. Yes, it's a uh, very uh, interesting uh, joint value proposition that you just described with the partnership we have uh, all of uh, our companies. Definitely, this solution has been evolving and is creating new and exciting scenarios that uh, we are helping to, to deliver and we are bringing to the market. Uh, the scenarios of uh, smart cities, as, as I described before, uh, are probably one of the more interesting and, and appealing solutions for uh, the potential customers. But also, as I mentioned, uh, mobility solutions uh, or uh, Industry 4.0 uh, based solutions are, are gaining more and more traction in the market. And uh, these are the type of solutions that we are uh, moving to and, and extending our solutions. Uh, we are also supporting new type of technologies that uh, Prakash mentioned before, like uh, open run technologies. These solutions were not uh, in the initial design that we were thinking about for, for a purely a smart city solution uh, based, but uh, they are definitely uh, getting more and more traction. And uh, also it's important to mention that uh, we are extending uh, in, in our whole footprint this kind of uh, solutions because so far not only the, the very localized or uh, let's say traditional markets we have been working in, but also extending to the new markets that we have been uh, increasing our footprint are also very interested on this kind of solutions. And, and uh, this is another way of uh, extending the, the initial blueprint, not only in terms of uh, services, but also clearly in terms of the, the, the geographical footprint. Excellent. Thanks, Aitor. And uh, Antonio, from a Lenovo perspective, uh, how is this use case in, in Barcelona evolving and providing new opportunities? No, this is a, a critical project for us. The first comment is because Barcelona is a flagship city. I mean, it's a reference, a worldwide reference. So I guess that many cities are going to see what's happening in, in Barcelona. The second big comment is regarding the, the ecosystem. I mean, we're working with the city of Barcelona. We're working with different partners to build the solutions that a city like Barcelona needs today, but even to have a, would say, an ecosystem ready for the future. So as I mentioned, working in, in different use cases like manufacturing, but even education, transportation, et cetera, could be a reference for other cities. At the end of the day, different cities are going to have different needs because the problems uh, could be completely different because of perhaps, I don't know, traffic uh, issues or uh, pollution issues, et cetera, et cetera. But the good news is that the platform that we're building together today could fit in any single city. We have the experience, the knowledge to really replicate and scale different use cases in other cities by bringing the right uh, ISVs to build the use cases which could solve the most important pro problems that other cities could have today. So it's going to be a really good experience and I hope that we can replicate really, really soon in many other places across the world. Okay, excellent. Thanks, Antonio. And uh, Prakash, uh, what has Intel learned from this Barcelona experience and, and how do you see things developing from here? Yeah, we were quite excited about uh, partnering with, uh, you know, Lenovo, Celnex nearby uh, in the Barcelona opportunity. Um, what's really exciting for us is real, you know, seeing real deployments because we learned such a lot from an actual deployment is one thing to be able to, you know, show some of the school technology in the lab is something totally different seeing it in the real world. Um, we see this as a blueprint. Uh, we see this opportunity to scale this blueprint, uh, not just to other, you know, smart city type use cases, but all kinds of, you know, uh, smart stadium, you know, ports, all, all kinds of different use cases that can start to use, you know, potential uh, to use this, this, this blueprint. And we're very excited about, you know, working with uh, mm -hmm. Lenovo and, and Celnex in this capacity. So. Okay, great. Well, uh, really interesting to end today's discussion with a real life use case. Uh, Prakash, Antonio, Aitor, thanks very much for joining us today and sharing your insights. Thanks very much. And don't forget to watch the other programs in the Intel Network Builders vSummit series. As well as Edge, we're taking an in-depth look at the network core, vRAN and security. Thanks for watching and goodbye.